let's put it this way, there were many movements before us in the 50s and the 40s, but this was Stonewall, something very different. Well, Stonewall was always a place where you could gather in front of it. I was born and raised in Greenwich Village. You could always find something open in the village, and uh, I lived on Charles Street. When the night of Stonewall, my mom and my best friend, we were sitting in my, our living room. My mom said, gee, it's a hot night. Why don't you and your friend go down and get us a couple of ice cream cones? I said, oh, okay. So we're walking towards Christopher and 10th Street. So we were going down, and the voice was right here, newspaper. And there were a whole bunch of guys sticking their heads out. And I said, what's going on? They said, Stonewall. And as I turned, a whole bunch of my friends started to come over and say, there's a lot of things going on over there. They're, they're starting to really get crazy, the cops. And I turned around, and before, we, before my friend and I knew it, there were like a dozen cops. They were all standing there. And it was a horrible night. A lot of people got hurt. My mom and dad, they made me get a lot of my friends over. My mama made a little triage in the kitchen. And my dad would be with them and call up their people and everything, who slept on the floor that night, who needed to have a little cut or something. My mom set up the whole kitchen and everything. Not many people at Stonewall. I don't know if anybody did come from the village that was from Stonewall. I, really, I think I'm the only one. A lot of them died in the AIDS crisis. South Bronx and New York, where one in every five men suffer the AIDS virus, along with one in every ten women. The figures are worse than parts of Central Africa. President Reagan has yet to respond to a special government commission which is recommending that up to one billion dollars be spent here on AIDS care and prevention. As the argument over funding continues, the latest prediction in the city is that by 1993, 50,000 people will have died from AIDS. We lost a whole generation of people um, in the AIDS epidemic. So m many of our Stonewall pioneers, the people that were there in Stonewall, are no longer alive because of AIDS. Right? So, so many of our leaders, our storytellers, are gone. I think one of the things that does is that it creates in the rest of us, those who survive Stonewall, those who survive the AIDS epidemic, this tremendous sense of responsibility that we have to be here and tell our story and fight for our rights, not just for ourselves, but for the people who didn't make it, who aren't here anymore. Reagan never mentioned the word AIDS. Never, through his entire presidency, never mentioned it. And people were dying like flies. I was tired of going to funerals. I mean, I lost, like, most of my friends. You used to have, you know, you know, phone books full of names and numbers, and all of a sudden, you know, you got to mark them out because they're, they're no longer here. It was devastating. You know, so many of us died. So many of my friends died. Um, older folks in the community died. It was traumatic and horrible. And at the same time, out of that, out of that, we, we built this, this sense of, of, of power and organizing. We had no choice. We had to fight just for the right to stay alive. It really embedded in us the sense of this is our responsibility. We cannot just sit back and be quiet. We have to stand up and be proud and be loud and keep fighting. And that's what, that's what we do. It's been an interesting ride. That's all I gotta say, it's been a very interesting ride. I mean, I, there are a lot of parts that I would certainly would not have liked to see now. You know, the, the AIDS crisis was devastating for so many people and families and you know friends and well friends and you know who were a part of my family because that's one of the things that's very interesting about the LGBT community we become family what we did as a community and came together during that time we would never have been able to do that were it not for what our pioneers did you know at Stonewall if you want to make the future or the present you've got to remember the past History repeats itself.